Hi, my name is Raj Gurn and I'm the publisher of Anoki magazine. I'm blessed to meet and have intimate and provocative conversations with the hottest and most influential celebrities from around the world. We talk about all aspects of what drives them to their personal greatness. You never know whose door I'll be walking through next. special for you. Okay, that is? Well, other than you. Ah! Thank you! There you go. Oh my god, finally I get to see it. I know. Oh, it looks lovely. I don't know who's more beautiful, this girl here or this one oh, here? This one, this one. No, I <laughs> oh, think this you. one. Oh, you're most welcome. You. So I finally get to see this one. Absolutely. So Frida, my Hello. gosh, I cannot believe that I'm sitting here in this room with you with all the craziness that's been going on in your life. The last six months have been insane. I'm so insane. excited I made it here. There's something that I totally need to ask you. Mm -hmm. How on earth did you get the role for Slumdog? I say the old-fashioned audition way. Yeah. So I went in for an audition and there was lovely intern and the casting director of this film who's also been credited as co-director. Mm -hmm. She put me on tape and the tape was sent to London and then Daddy Boyle saw me on tape. Yeah. And I'm really happy that he had his instincts a bit bang on back then when he said maybe she might just be it. Mm -hmm. So he came back to India and then I, he auditioned me for like six months straight before I got the part. And everyone keeps asking me like why did you go in for like a six month audition like who goes in for a six month audition but what I think I learned to the six months was everything that one needs to learn when they're starting off fresh with no acting background mm -hmm. with no experience at an acting school so I think it really helped me and mm -hmm. it's completely paid off I wouldn't have been half as confident if I didn't have the six months of auditioning so what did you do in those six months I mean how many times can you keep taking two and taking three. No, but it'll be the same scene over and over again. This yeah. is kitchen scene where I'm making the sandwich in the film. And that's the only film uh, that has the most amount of dialogue. When I read the script, I pretty much knew that I, I didn't have too much screen time. And this is what Danny Boyle said to me. He was like, you, your, your importance in the film is your absence. Mm -hmm. Because the entire film, Jamal Malik is trying to find you and try to, trying to reconnect with you through the game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So you have to make those 20 minutes of yours the most powerful performance ever because everyone, not just Jamal Malik, but everyone needs to fall in love with you. How, how do you take that little you know, role mm -hmm. and, and really breathe that kind of life into it and that kind of energy into it? I mean, as you said, six months worth of mm -hmm. going over the same thing over and over again. After a while, you almost kind of feel like you're losing the authenticity of it and the naturalness of it yeah. because it almost becomes like a science project. Yeah. Like, How do you deter from making it feel almost like it's robotic? Yeah. I knew that if I wanted Latika to be uh, a girl that not just Jamal Malik could recognize and relate to, but everyone in the audience could also you know, understand what she was going through, mm -hmm. I had to make it very real. Mm -hmm. So I guess subtlety was a key, because mm -hmm. she couldn't be a character who goes over the top and think, why are you here and get out of my house and you know, we're both going to get killed, etc, etc. It had to come from a very, very internal, very deep space. I guess after the first four months of auditioning, I started getting obsessed with the character. Mm -hmm. And in a strange way, I, f I felt that now I'm finally losing Frida and trying to get more of Latika into me. So every time I'd walk around, instead of um, asking myself how would Frida react in the situation, I would ask myself how would Latika react to the situation. Mm -hmm. And knowing that she comes from a different background, knowing that she has gone through different experiences, and it's kind of very different from what Frida has gone through. because. I have been really privileged to be born and brought up in a middle class family in Bombay, but Latika in the film doesn't have those privileges, you know, she's an orphan. And just trying to understand the dynamics of a character kind of uh, made me understand what she was going through. And I remember Danny saying this all the time. In your dialogues, you'll be saying no throughout the film, but in your eyes, you'll always have a yes. Mm. So let your eyes speak. Mm -hmm. Let your words do something completely different. And I was like, oh, that seems easy. I'll ace that. It wasn't half as easy as I thought it was yeah, going to be. I bet. Yeah. How do you, you know, take that character and, um, you know, make people really believe that you really went through that? Because it's difficult to it do is, that. It is. I guess the character is very innocent and there is this part of innocence that is within Frida as well that hasn't died yet and I hope it never dies, you know? So I guess I tapped into that part, that part of my personality. And I guess every girl goes to goes through situations where she wants something and she really can't get it, mm -hmm. but she has to really strive hard to get it. 
And I would think about those times. It doesn't necessarily have to be what Latika has gone through, but every girl goes through emotions like those. And they're universal norms for all of us. They're, so you pull from those, yeah. right? So do, you, so do you feel that, you know, here's um, Danny Boyle, a British guy, okay, comes into India and um, is trying to tell a universal story in a very defined culture. Yeah. And you know, that's a difficult thing yeah. to do as an outsider. See, when I watch the movie, being that I'm Indian and I understand, you know, certain nuances that you can only really understand when you're brought up yeah. in the culture. Yeah. He was able to capture them. He was able to capture them. It's really funny because I, I remember at the VT station, it was hot, it was muggy, it was crowded, mm -hmm. and I was like, how is how are we just going to get through this day, you know? Yeah. People are just looking straight into the camera. You cannot stop 500 people who are curious about, they want to know what's happening. Mm. And you do have your extras, but at the same time, you do have those real people who commute day in and day out with those various, this, the tension written on their faces, the, the happiness written on their faces, various emotions, uh, the people from Mumbai. And he's just worked around it. Mm. You know, he was like, I'll get my shots, and that's the only way you can really capture the real, the real uh, pulse of the city. Mm -hmm. And he's done that. And I guess, which is why I keep saying it's it's amazing that it actually took a foreign director yeah. to come down to Bombay and for the first time give India yeah. and the world mm -hmm. a film that captures Mumbai in a light that no one has ever seen before. And that's a real light. That is a real light. As yeah. opposed to an adaptation or what people think it is or a translated yeah. version. Most people try to over romanticize the city because yeah. it is it does have so much history attached to it and then uh, it's, it's like um, the Bombay dream. Yeah. Everyone has th talks about the American dream, but mm. it's pretty much there's a Bombay dream that's very uh, that exists in India as well. People from various parts of India come to Bombay. People from Bo from Bombay move to like the hub in Bombay to get what they want, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think he's just captured it beautifully. And Jamal Malik is that underdog, you know, mm -hmm. who is like struggling to get what he wants. And here you are in um, Mumbai, a Mumbai girl. You go through the process the way people normally do, mm -hmm. and um, you end up in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. How come you didn't end up in Bollywood? I, I don't know. I just think that f it's really strange because I did audition for a couple of Bollywood films. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing really had my heart. And I am that stubborn girl who pretty much knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. When I read it, it just had my heart. And I was like, I have to go for it. All of a sudden now, this person comes out of the blue. Yeah. Okay, she, she does this role. Now, the whole planet wants to know everything about you. And that's part and parcel of being in the limelight. That's it takes me a little while to go out there and be my goofy self. I, I, I am really goofy as well and very clumsy. Yeah. But it takes me a while to get there with, among people who I'm not really familiar with. Mm -hmm. But my friend in London said a very, very interesting thing. She said, Frida, if they're talking about you, mm -hmm. it means you've arrived. Absolutely. So let them do it. Mm -hmm. The day they stop talking about you, you need to start getting a bit worried. What actors did you really look up to and why? I would say it had to be Madhuri Dixit. Mm -hmm. There was something about her and her versatility mm -hmm. that she would, you throw anything at her and she would ace it. Mm -hmm. She could be, she could make you laugh, she could make you cry, mm -hmm. she could make you dance with her. Absolutely. Because she, when you see her dance, you don't want to sit down and just watch her dance. Yeah. You want to get up and groove with her. It was lovely speaking oh, with you, darling. You. You're absolutely adorable. Thank I you. wish you all the success in the world. Thank you so much thank for giving you. me your time. Thank you. Till next time. Cheers.